In 1991, I was serving in the Royal Navy. I'd served for 20 years, happily married with two young children. The first Gulf War started, I volunteered to go, sailed from Portsmouth, and to cut a long story short, I was involved in a wartime incident that left me with a head injury, and I was in hospital for, for five years. Uh, I woke up, couldn't talk, couldn't read, write, walk, and couldn't remember my family, and it was from there that I was first introduced to my first assistant's dog, Endel. One day my daycare bus didn't come and pick me up, it coincided with my wife going to a puppy class at another assistance dog organisation. I had to go up with her because she couldn't leave me at home and I was in the corner and this little yellow Labrador who had a bit of an attitude problem, he came alongside the wheelchair and did something for me, picked something off the floor and put it in my lap and he stayed for 15 years. I'd lost love, hate, happiness and sadness and that dog nurtured those new emotions in me, we developed new ones, you know, so much so that I remarried my wife six years ago and uh, you know, it wouldn't have happened if Endel hadn't come into my life. Every day that guy gave me this independence and level of uh, quality of life and my wife knew as a nurse that she could go out that door and that dog could save my life. At Crufts, uh, Endel really proved his mettle. We were sadly both hit by a hit and run car and left unconscious in a hotel car park late at night. And Endel, though injured, got up, pulled me into the recovery position, covered me with a blanket from under the wheelchair. He then crawled under a nearby vehicle and retrieved my mobile phone, which had jettisoned off in the impact. He then brought it back to me, pushed it into my face, couldn't wake me, couldn't raise me, and then he limped off to a nearby hotel and raised the alarm there and bringing the staff back to where I was. And for that, he won the first peacetime George Cross, which is the animal Victoria Cross. I was well aware that our story had captured the imagination of the public. And I realised, why is our story so powerful when I'm only one of 900,000 injured servicemen and women? And then I did a study to see how many actually had an assistance dog. And that number was really quite poor and I couldn't believe it. And I thought, why? The benefit, not only to me, but to my family. Out of 98 of us badly injured in 91 that were married, only five of us remain so today. The name is very evocative, Hounds for Heroes, but we couldn't exclude emergency services personnel like policemen, firemen and paramedics. The injuries for these homeland heroes are no less severe than those on the front line in conflicts around the world. Being a new charity, we've been able to you know, look at what is out there, what is working, and we've been able to adopt the best practices from other organisations. And we found the Labrador Golden Retriever as certainly the, the, the good, good solid stays that you know, have a good longevity, good health record, and are able to do this job. We go and look at litters of puppies when they are about five weeks of age. And what we're looking at, we're looking at the whole litter, we're looking at a really nice, soft, biddable puppy that naturally wants to be with you and please you, not off playing with its friends, it actually wants to interact with you. So we're really looking for that sort of happy-go-lucky, in the middle puppy. We don't want them too bold and confident, but we actually don't want them too shy either. We train them at Hounds for Heroes to pick up items that are dropped, to open doors, to really just enhance somebody in their everyday life if they want to you know, stay at home all day on their own. By having a dog, they can't have that option. They've got a reason to get up and get out in the morning. They have to take their dog out, and their dog then starts a whole new life for them. Training itself starts at eight weeks old. We have puppy classes each week, and we will continue that process until the dogs are about 14 months old. We then move on to the big progress of pre-advanced work and that's where the dogs have to learn to work alongside wheelchairs, they have to work in any given situation and this can take really up until the dogs are about 18 months to two years. We came to the sum, it's £20,000 for the lifetime of the dog, now that's two years training and eight years placing and, and one of the things we do differently than all the other organisations out there is we fully fund the cost of the dog for the client. So we cover the veterinary costs, we cover insurance costs and the food costs to the client because we decided we didn't want anyone to be turned away because they couldn't afford the dog. And we were very fortunate that Pfizer Animal Health had heard about the charity. They wanted to fund the whole cost of the dog for £20,000. And that is truly incredible. That is a gift that is going to enable a serviceman or woman to have a quality of life. It means we can now be looking for the next squadron of dogs and we're already up to squadron three. So, you know, that sort of funding is incredible and we are truly grateful. Pop them up on the table and we'll, we'll give them the one over. Okay. Pfizer Animal Health are going to give us 25p for every kennel cough vaccine they sell. And to us being a small organisation, that 25p is amazing. I would recommend um, every owner to have the dog vaccinated 
against kennel cough. His ears are lovely, I'll have a peep in, the, in them in a second. The risk with kennel cough is um, it's an airborne infection that's spread by coughing and sneezing. So any direct contact with other dogs will put their dogs at risk. Um, you don't know when that situation will arise. Um, it can arise from social contact, uh, kenneling, um, going to shows, etc. Sometimes the trouble we're always trying to hit a moving target. By having regular vaccination against kennel cough, in addition to the annual other vaccinations that are carried out, will give their pet a high level of protection. Okay, okay then, thank you very much. Till the next time. Till the next time, we'll pop them down. In doing so, anyone who vaccinates their dog is also knowing that they're, they're contributing to an enhancement of a disabled and injured serviceman's life. So it's, it's a win situation. One, you're vaccinating the dog, and, and you know that's what we would encourage everyone to do. It shouldn't just be assistance dogs that are vaccinated and treated. It's every pet owner should take that responsibility.